what is going on everybody uh winston davis here with move up consulting for all the warriors and champions out there what we're talking about today is how to basically prevent payroll loss and how to uh you know, keep some of that money because at the end of the day in business it's not always about how much you're making and bringing in it's about what you're keeping right what do you at the end of the day have in your pocket going out so i'm going to talk about 10 steps 10 things that you in your residential service business uh, can do to uh, stop payroll loss so jumping right in so number one is going to be switching from paper to digital so having a digital time clock uh, for all your employees having a system that actually runs payroll instead of just doing things by paper um, so many people they just are trying to be cheap and they're like oh, I don't want to spend the money on a piece of software or a program just spend the money because you're wasting one time but also uh, there's a lot of error in trying to do it by your you know by by hand so you know anywhere from one to probably about seven percent error in doing it by hand so just go ahead and switch to digital and get a time clock system when the guys come in um, you know, make sure that it's an in and out, it's easy and, you know, no time cards, no whiteboard thing, no little sticky notes on your desk. Like, Hey, I clocked in at such and such, or I started work at such and such time. Um, so just get that out of the way because really it's just a nuisance. It's, it's eating up your, your mental capacity. So number two is, um, instead of hiring new employees, Sometimes you can actually just a lot over time to your current employees. It's actually kind of reverse thinking because a lot of folks think, oh, I don't want to pay time and a half. Like that's a waste of money. But really, it's more money for you to go out and hire someone else because one, you're spending either your time or another employee's time in recruiting, screening, hiring, onboarding, training. All those things and what if that employee doesn't work out then you got to bring another one in so a lot of times you're better off to just do a little bit of overtime with people that you already have and people love that like most people that are working for you are like yeah give me the hours because it's money for them so go the route of overtime first and then as needed you, you dump that work off to the next hire so go with overtime first Number three, outsource non-critical tasks. Okay, so if it's, and especially if it's occasional, like if it's something that only comes up one or two times a month, um, you don't need to pay an employee to do that. Outsource it. Use, uh, use um, programs like Up, Upwork and Fiverr. Outsource all those tasks because if it's a $10 an hour, $15, $20 an hour task, excuse me, you don't need to do it. And you don't need to have an employee that you're paying to sit at a desk that half the day they're not doing something. So find those occasional tasks and just outsource them. Number four, uh, convert fixed wages into performance-based uh, comp plans. So especially if you have anybody that's in sales at all, like make it so that way they're not getting you know, you really want your salespeople to be 90% commission, if if not 100% commission. So if you're paying salespeople a $2,000 or $2,500 salary plus commission, get rid of that. Like find a way to restructure their comp plan that has a higher reward threshold, but it also isn't you paying them a chunk of money every single month because they'll work way harder when they're working for that money. And so um, other ways you can find positions to where um, you can make part of their comp plan incentivized for performance. And that just takes a little creativity, um, putting together like a point system. So that way they get bonuses if they hit certain marks. And what that also allows you to do is deduct points. So like you can't go in and deduct someone's pay. That's an hour, hourly employee. Like you, you can't be doing that. But what you can do is set up a point system and the the plan is essentially they, if they hit so many points for some type of 
performance, then they get a monetary bonus towards their check. But then you can deduct points. OK, so if they that's a consequence reward system that you can implement. So look into things like that. Uh, number five, automate and delegate tasks properly. So that way your high paid employees aren't doing low medi medial tasks. OK, delegation and automation are really important and people don't do enough of it. So if you can have a piece of technology or a tool, do something that a, a person can do and it's cheaper and quicker and usually there's way less error. Go that route. Um, you know, too many people, too many owners are holding on to, you know, they when they first got their business started, they had their brother-in-law or uncle or somebody, you know, be like a, a part-time employee and they're just continuing to pay that person and it's eating up payroll. And so you just got to figure, you got to draw a line. So it's at some point you've got to decide, okay, we're not going to keep paying this person because it's just not, we're not getting enough value or you don't necessarily drop people, just restructure roles and responsibilities. So automation and delegation are tremendous because when you can delegate things, one that frees your time up, it frees up the, um, your, your upper, uh, employees so that way their time and your time can be spent on more more work that is just um more creative honestly so six uh cross train employees so this is huge you know if you're strapped for cash and your payroll is too high then make sure that you're doing training across the board so multiple people can do a, a job or whatever task and then you're not tied to having a certain person go to a job or do a certain thing. So cross train people. Number seven, uh, reduce your employee turnover rate. So this is getting a, an actual hiring process, being better at selecting, recruiting, pre-screening and onboarding your, your potential hirees and your new hirees um, because you're shelling out money between one, you hired someone, they were with you for three months and then they're gone because they weren't a good fit. Well, you paid somebody money and you had your, your employees, your trainers or your managers invest time into that person and now it's gone. So that's wasted money. So get better about your hiring and your recruiting um, and your training, right? So number eight, uh, review, review levels of compensation. So across your entire business, um, you should sit down with, with, I mean, this is something that like I would sit down with a piece of scratch paper, or a whiteboard and draw out the business, draw out the people, draw out how much money is, you know, being moved through payroll and figure out if that aligns with production. And if you see play and, and that'll really, when you get it on paper and you get it in front of you, you'll be able to see, okay, we're probably spending too much money. Like this person's making this much. They're doing this amount of work though. So let's figure out how we can delegate some more tasks to that person. So that way it's more, it's more worthwhile and their day is actually full. Too many employees, they, they have so many pockets of the day that they're not engaged and that's not their fault. That's the business owner's fault and the management's fault. Okay. So uh, nine, which is, is not necessarily, and these are all just ideas. So I don't want people to be like, oh, Winston said to, you know, do this and do this and do this. These are just ideas, okay? I'll tell you in a minute once I go through the 10, what I would do first. So number nine is trimming perks, such as uh, maybe health benefits or retirement contributions, et cetera. So not necessarily going straight for pay if you offer benefits or any type of incentives like that, you can, you can uh, maybe not delete them all the way, but make it so that way the employee is paying a larger premium. You're not putting maybe paying as much into the plan. There's little things like that that can save you some money. And um, number 10 is taking an employee that's working, let's say Monday through Friday, basically eight hours. And this is really for your office staff. So let's say they're working five days a week, eight hours per day, so 40 hours. Take them from that schedule to offering them four days a week, 10 hours each day, 
they get that lap that they get an extra day, but in exchange for that, their their salary or their hourly comes down just a little bit. And so they're working the same amount of hours. They should be giving you the same level of production. They're just not there for five days. They're there for four days. And you basically it's a win win, especially for someone that like has kids. They just want a little bit more work life balance. So they would really enjoy the idea of having three days off instead of two. Um, so that's a way that you can sort of manipulate your scheduling. So that way it gives you favor in the payroll. Now, we talked about 10 ideas here. Um, I wouldn't do some of these right away. The first ones when when we talk about, you know, my payroll is too high. I need to I need to cut some payroll loss here. Probably the first thing I would look at is your straight up delegation of tasks. So we need to sit down and look at all your positions and roles and their responsibilities and make sure that people are doing what they're set to do. So that would be the first thing. And the second would be looking at that clear picture of where all your payroll is, where it's going out. And um, from there, seeing where the holes are in the bucket and see what's leaking out. Um, and then probably the next thing would be, you know, looking at if you're doing manual or paper payroll, you know, moving to digital, it'll, it'll save you money because there's loss in, in the error of manually doing, um, you know, those clock ins. And then the other couple would be um, outsourcing to that. That's a great one. I would look at changing that five day work week to a four day work week, do things like that way before you take you know out somebody's a little bit of their benefits or you cut payback or before you terminate employees people get they go from here to way across the spectrum of letting someone go because their payroll is too high and if they would have just looked at looked at their business uh in a in a more consultative look then they probably would have been able to keep the employee but just make some adjustments so Hope that helps. Again, just some ideas. It's all about payroll. How how can we you know maximize our profits and minimize our expense? Because again, at the end of the day, it's not how much that comes in. It's about how much you keep, right? All right, guys, go crush today. See ya, and I will see you at the top.